Hi, this is Scott from RedmondPhysicsTutoring.com, and today I'm going to show you a fairly typical example of an RC circuit, and in this case the capacitor is discharging. Now, the problem statement tells us that a capacitor is connected to a 180 ohm resistor, and it takes 0.7 seconds for the voltage across the capacitor to change from 45 volts to 12 volts. Find first the capacitance, and then the current through the resistor 0.2 seconds after the switch is closed. The first thing we're given is that the resistor has a resistance of 180 ohms. Um, we're also told that the capacitor voltage starts off at 45 volts, and it switches down to 12 volts, and it takes 0.7 seconds for it to go down to 12 volts. So I can draw this circuit again, and I can say at t equals 0.7 seconds, and then redraw it with the capacitor having 12 volts. I know the capacitor is discharging, because the voltage across the capacitor later on at 0.7 seconds is less. It's 12 volts, and that's less than the initial voltage. So I get Q across the capacitor as a function of time is equal to the initial charge, Q, times E to the negative T over RC. For a capacitor, the charge in the capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the voltage, and I can rewrite that to get the voltage or isolate the voltage, getting the voltage is equal to Q over C. So if I rewrite that equation for discharging the capacitor, I can get Q as a function of time over C is equal to Q initial over C, E to the negative T over RC, and I can really write that as a function for voltage. I have voltage as a function of time is equal to the initial voltage across the capacitor times E to the negative T over RC. At this point, I can actually just take a look and see what do I know. I know that the voltage at 0.7 seconds is 12 volts. I know the initial voltage is 45. I know the team is sorry the team the time is 0.7 seconds. I know the resistance. The only unknown in this equation is the value of the capacitance, and that's actually what it's asking for in the first part of the problem. So all I really need to do now is substitute. So I substitute 12 volts at 0.7 seconds is equal to the initial voltage, 45, times e to the negative, and then we have 0.7 seconds divided by and then this is 180 ohms times the capacitance. And the math is a little tricky here, but not really. It's just a matter of getting used to working with a logarithm functions. 12 over to 45 is equal to negative 0. Point e to the power of negative 0. 0.7 divided by 180 C. If I take a ln of both sides, I get ln of 12 over 45 is equal to negative 0. 0.7 over 180 C ln of 12 over 45 works out to negative 1.32 and I keep a few extra sig figs um, just because I'm often working on web work problems that are online and it's actually extremely picky about the significant figures so while I'm doing the calculations for intermediate calculations I tend to keep more sig figs anyway at this point then I can bring c to the left hand side and I'll drop that negative 1.32 to the bottom on the right hand side so I have c is equal to negative 0.7 over 180 times negative 1.32 I can do the math for that and I find that the capacitance is 2.9 times 10 to the negative 3 farads part b asks to find the current through the resistor at t equals 0.2 seconds. So it's a different time than in part A. The current will flow clockwise in as this circuit is drawn, and at t equals 0.2 seconds that would still be true. So we have current flowing clockwise. We don't know the voltage at t equals 0.2 seconds though, and we could figure out the voltage uh, with a similar technique to what we just used, but just to keep things interesting I'd like to use a different equation. And for a capacitor, whether it's charging or discharging, the current through the capacitor as a function of time is equal to the initial current, I naught, times e to the negative t over rc. Now, looking at this equation, I don't know the current at 0 0.2 seconds. I don't yet know the initial current. What I do know is the time, and I know the resistance, and now I know the capacitance. So if I'm going to solve for the current at 0 0.2 seconds, then I'm going to have to find the initial current first. So at t equals 0, which is, say, just after this circuit was connected, we can actually calculate the initial current through the resistor, 
is equal to the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance. And that basically comes from V equals IR. Now we know the voltage across the resistor has to be equal to the voltage across the capacitor because those two elements are in parallel. You could do Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law here and, and add up and look at the, the loops. Either way, it turns out in this case, we know the voltage, we know the resistance, so it's pretty easy to calculate the current. So the initial current then is going to be equal to the 45 volts across the resistor divided by 180 ohms, and we get 0 0.25 amps. Then to find the current at t equals 0 0.2 seconds, I just substitute this in because the initial current is 1 quarter amp. Then I have e to the negative 0 0.2 divided by 180 ohms times the capacitance, which was 2.9 times 10 to the negative 3 farads. And when I include extra sig figs and solve for this, I get 0 0.17 amps. So that's about it for this type of problem. It's really not so bad. You might need to refresh your memory on how to work with ln and the exponential functions, and you will definitely want to keep straight whether the capacitors are charging or discharging. And I find, for me, the best way to remember that is to look at the e to the negative blah 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 function as an exponential decay, and then you either have one minus that if you have something that's charging, accumulating charge, or you have e to the negative for the exponential decay. And the one counter to that is that when the capacitor is charging or discharging, the current that appears to flow through the capacitor always follows that exponential decay function because the current flows most easily at the beginning of the circuit and it eventually will drop to zero. I'm Scott Redmond and I help students pass physics. If this video helped you, please like it on YouTube to let me know.